so much to talk about, but I'm going to try to squeeze a lot of it into a little bit amount of time as far as the wall, yes, the wall that we saw and stood at today between Jerusalem and Palestinian territory. You guys keep watching. I'm going to have more of that coming up today on The Hollywood Conservative for The Rebel. So many incredible things to talk about. I mean, it would take hours upon hours upon hours to tell you everything that we saw and learned and experienced today. I'm going to focus on one of the things that we did because I'm learning that long videos are not uploading with my data plan here, nor on crappy hotel Wi-Fi. Hotel Wi-Fi is the worst. Okay, so this morning, started out with a briefing from Colonel Danny Tierzin. He is former former colonel of the IDF. He was the chief negotiator with Yasser Arafat and the Palestinians. Uh, incredible man, had so much information to share. I'm going to share it with you. I've got lots and lots of notes, um, but I'm going to try to skim through these pretty quickly. So uh, going back to Bill Clinton administration, Israel was willing to give up the West Bank uh, and Gaza for Palestinians to stop their aggression. Yasser Arafat said, no way, Jose. A few minutes later, the Palestinians started attacking. So the reason I mention these things is because we see what goes on and what they tell us in the American media, and it's just straight up bull, you know what, uh, straight up propaganda. Uh, so where we were standing, we were at the wall, the wall, the wall that we should have on our southern border in the United States, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so less than 12% of Bethlehem, which was just on the other side of the wall, uh, I think it's like less than uh, two kilometers from where we were standing, uh, just on the other side of this wall uh, is only 12% Christian now, majority Muslim. How sad is that? Same with Nazareth. Um, so a lot of these iconically Christian and biblically symbolic places are now Muslim majority. Um, there, oh, from what we could see from that wall, there is this like pristine white multi-condominium complex. Looks like something that you would see in Panama City Beach or in Orange County or I don't know, some beachy shore in the United States. Uh, this condominium complex is a refugee camp. So they're not showing that on the news. It is the only place on earth where fourth generation refugees can reside. So not just first generation, but they can have kids and then they can have kids and then they can have kids and they can be propped up by UN refugee resources. So education, healthcare, food, all of that. Uh, da, 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 da. So the way that this wall is set up on the Israeli side, it's like a big deserted field. Now, on the other side of that field, so a picture you are staring at this wall, uh, there's a big field in front of you. There are homes behind you that have bulletproof glass because, um, so it's all stone, has bulletproof glass to the degree that uh, if you are walking into your kitchen at night and you open your fridge and the Palestinians see a light on in your kitchen, they will start shooting. Now the rules of engagement on either side are very different. And the reason that I describe the topography and the landscape is because on the other side of the wall, on the Palestinian side of the wall, it's all homes. Now Israelis, if they detect someone on the other side of the wall, they will not shoot because they don't want to hit innocent civilians. On the Israeli side of the wall, Palestinians have no problem with that because there are not a lot of civilians immediately on that side of the wall. So the rules of engagement are very different. Uh, the mentalities are very different. Palestinians shoot at will, don't care. Israelis are caring about the civilians on the other side of the wall, even though they are their enemies uh, and they don't want to hit innocent civilians. Let's, let's uh, go back from Bill Clinton. Let's move on to Obama. So Senator Obama, back when he was still a senator, yeah, 42-year-old junior senator, uh, back when he was a senator, he was in Israel speaking to uh, Danny Tirza, and he said uh, they were talking about the wall and, and the shooting that happens and the conflict across that. And Senator Obama said to him, why don't you just move the wall back? He's, and Obama said to him, you are using the security issue to take Palestinian land. That's what he told this man. Um, let's see, what else can I say? Okay, so it is... Uh, 44 centimeters wide. It is nine meters high. Uh, Danny Tirza said that people would ask him why so high and he said well because six meters some very very talented and agile people could com conceivably climb. Nine meters not so much. And then people ask why is it so ugly? 
And on the Palestinian side, well, excuse me, on the Israeli side, yeah, it's ugly. It's just a plain concrete wall, uh, but it's not that ugly. Um, there's some graffiti, Palestinians have written on it in graffiti that Israelis are Nazis. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. uh, on the Palestinian side, apparently it is covered in graffiti, top to bottom, all over. Um, but we were asking him why they allow them to graffiti because it just seems really disrespectful. I mean, it's Palestinian, so what do you expect? But he said, you know, Israelis let them graffiti because graffiti kind of allows them an outlet to uh, release their aggression and that's better than violence. But the thing that was so stark and amazing to me, uh, I think those are all the things that I wanted to talk about. The thing that was so amazing to me is the dichotomy between what we were seeing there and the rules of engagement and the way that the Israelis handle aggression with the other side, uh, the difference between that and what you see on American media. American media talks about you know apartheid, which by the way is not true because there are Arabs living on the Israeli side and Jews living on the Palestinian side. Um, but the difference between that and, and what we see in American media and the sympathy that we see you know, all of these other mainstream media organizations exhibit towards the Palestinians, and it's, it's just insane. Um, I'm going to try to compile my notes and, and possibly post them in a blog uh, later on this week for you guys so that you can kind of see more specifically the statistics and things that I collected. Hope you are all having a great week so far. Hope you had a great weekend. We got 4th of July in a couple days, and we will be at the American Embassy here in Jerusalem on the 4th of July, so I'm really looking forward to that, and hopefully I can get a Rebel video from that embassy. Hope you're all having a great day. Thanks for watching. I'm Amanda Head, the Hollywood conservative for The Rebel. If you enjoyed my commentary and want to hear more from all of us here at The Rebel, subscribe to our premium content at www.therebel.media forward slash shows. Make sure you're following us on Facebook and Twitter for all of our latest news and download our new app for The Rebel Media on the App Store. That way you will have super easy and instant access to all of our latest videos and your favorite Rebel shows. We update them all the time. Everybody, thanks for watching. I'm Amanda Head for The Rebel.